This right here is the PlayStation 5 DualSense. Yes, it's powered up because we are going to go hands-on with the PlayStation 5. Hey guys, it's Jeff Keeley, and this is a special Summer Game Fest stream. Really a special year for all of us that new consoles are coming out, and a lot of people have wondered what PlayStation 5 is going to play like. Um, a big part of that is the controller and the experience of playing games, especially because this controller is a little different than the traditional DualShock. And I've got that here, my, my PS4 Pro DualShock. This is a form factor that really has been around since the original PlayStation um, in you know various different forms. There weren't analog sticks back then. But the DualSense introduces a couple new innovations. Uh, and having played it here for a couple of hours, I'll kind of summarize those for you before we get into some gameplay. Um, the big things that I've noticed are the adaptive triggers, um, the L2 and R2. So outside of the game environment, you just kind of pull these down like any controller. But when you're in a game, there's actually the possibility to create tension points or haptics inside of these adaptive triggers. So imagine pulling this down and feeling the pressure from a bow in the in a bow and arrow. Or even in an action game, um, pulling this down and feeling active reload points where designers can actually create tension points as you pull this down at certain percentages um, and give the player feedback. So I think that's a unique sensation that is going to have a pretty big impact, I think, longer term on um, gameplay. The other thing inside of this controller are the haptics. So PlayStation had rumble um, for quite some time, but the haptics add another layer to the experience. It's not just sort of one rumble point. And so it's not just kind of on or off. There's the ability to create other um, sensations, as you'll see in this demo I'm going to show you of, of Astrobot's Playroom. Uh, you'll see what ice feels like, what sand feels like in different surfaces. The other thing that I've noticed is that the speaker in the dual sense, um, it feels like it has much more range than the PlayStation 4 speaker, and it often directly ties into what's happening with the haptics. At least in Astro's Playroom, there's much more variety in the types of sounds coming out of the speaker. And I'm sure every game will use it differently or may not use it as much. But at least in this demo, you really do sense that there's a lot going on with the haptics and there's sound that ties into it. And then when you combine that with the Tempest 3D engine in PlayStation 5 for the speakers, the, the sort of harmony between the controller sound and what's happening in the PlayStation 5 is, is really, really unique and interesting. Um, so those are the things I noticed in it. Um, some people have asked also about like, what's the weight of it? What does it feel like? Um, compared to the, the, the DualShock for PS4, it definitely weighs a little bit more, but doesn't feel substantially um, heavier. And if anything, I think it actually has a little more heft to it um, in a good way that it feels more structured um, and there's more sort of inside of it. So um, centered, but um, definitely feels feels good to me. So let's talk about what we're gonna play today. Um, what we're gonna check out is Astro's Playroom, and that is the game that comes packed with the PlayStation 5. Um, it is uh, pre-installed on the system, you don't even have to download it. And it's not just like a tutorial uh, demo of 15 minutes, it's a multi-hour game. We're gonna get to play one section of it today. Uh, and I think the reason we're playing this is because it comes with the system and it really showcases the controller. So, of course, everyone wants to see see what uh, you know, Horizon Forbidden West looks like on the system. And this is a demo that is focused, I think, more on the controller and the haptics and the ad adaptive triggers versus trying to showcase the power of the SSD or, you know, the true graphics horsepower of uh, PS5. So that's all stuff we can look forward to. We've seen those games. Uh, you know, at the event and they look spectacular. So that's another aspect of PS5 that I'm sure hopefully we'll get to see more of um, in the in the coming weeks. But at least right now, we're going to look at the controller and how that relates to gameplay with Astro's Playroom. So let's call it up here and uh, go hands-on live with PS5. So you can even hear the sound of my bot walking around. So full six degrees of motion as always. Uh, looks like I'm gonna have to flick up here on the pad to release my bot. Uh, and we are in CPU Plaza. The thing about this game, as you will see in this demo, 
there are a lot of references to the history of PlayStation. So Cooling Springs is the area that is open on Jeff's demo um, of this game. And we are going to jump in here and just go through this experience um, with the bot. All right, so we're on the beach here. There are beach balls you can play around with. There are some bots enjoying life, sunning themselves, bot on vacation here. Should I disrupt them? Let's do it. How rude of me, right? And then we're going to head on over here into this uh, sandstorm created by, I guess, these CPU fans. And again, when you get into this environment... I'm static here, but you, you hear the crisp sounds of, of sand coming at you. There's a tension in the controller uh, from going over the sand environment. And then you push further in. Here we are. And look, the rubber ducks are back. Remember the duck demos? PlayStation 3, I think that was, rubber ducks. All right, so I have uh, this suit, and I'm going to... Push up on the controller, to zip them up. This is the frog suit. Uh, and this frog suit shows off the adaptive controllers. Uh, so I'm gonna move my controller left and right. And these adaptive triggers are really, really cool. And I've never felt something like this before in a, a console controller. As you push down on the controller, there's tension now in these adaptive trigger, triggers and it's programmable. One thing that I think is really fun about this demo is it it makes you think of how these technologies are going to be used in other games so you think of ratchet and clank i mean obviously a lot of this gameplay similar in style to a ratchet game so you think of all those crazy graphics that we saw um on the stream but with this type of control and this kind of fun so now we've made it to the frozen pool area And here, we're gonna pull down on this. And again, you see this ice, but you hear a storm literally inside of the dual sense, and sort of a, a small little rumble from the haptics. Um, little ice shards here. As you go past every ice shard, you hear the little tink of the ice shard. Um, I wonder if, like, if I put this up to the mic, this is like, this is not ASMR, this is. PSMR. Um, do you guys hear that? His little footsteps? All this is coming out of the controller. Got a checkpoint here. Now this one, you actually have to blow into the controller. Again, this one, you pull back, just like a bow and arrow almost, and look, I unlocked a PlayStation 3. I have a PlayStation 5. Well, I had a lot of fun playing with the DualSense controller and AstroBot. And I wanted to get a little more information on all things PlayStation. So joining me now is the worldwide head of marketing at PlayStation, Eric Lempel. Eric, how are we doing? Hi, Jeff. How are you? I, I'm doing I'm doing pretty good. I got, I got to go hands-on with the uh, PS5, which was a nice surprise this week. I was not expecting it. But uh, you guys are full of surprises for PS5, it looks like. Yeah, and you're one of the first to actually touch the dual sense outside of the company and the developers. Uh, you know, I, I'd love to know what you think. This is a this is a big thing for us. Yeah, no. Uh, again, I'm used to going to you know a big event and playing with everyone, but uh, the fact that I got got it here and and got to play it was was really special. And I have to say, after watching the event and and seeing the games, I was excited. But the gameplay feels like a whole other dimension to the experience um, with, you know, what's happening with the adaptive triggers and the haptics and everything. So it was one of those things that I was playing AstroBot, but imagining all the other games, uh, how that's going to, to impact the experience. And one thing I'd heard is that that demo or version of it, you guys actually shared with developers initially? That's true. So what you played is a part of a, a title called Astro's Playroom. It was in our show a few weeks ago and it's installed on every PlayStation 5. So everyone who buys a PlayStation 5 will get this game, and it really shows off a lot of the features of the platform, but really does a great job of showing all the benefits of the DualSense controller. So what we did is, early on, we had another version of the title that we took around to the developers that were engaged in PlayStation 5 development and showed them what was possible with 
a title. And um, it, it's been a great example. And it's really opened up people's minds to how they can use this this new device and, and really the new features of the controller. But, you know, I would say when people get their PlayStation 5, that should probably be one of the first things they do is just jump in there and experience this because as, as you've seen, it's it's pretty special. No, we've been using the same dual, you know, a similar kind of form factor of DualShock for many, many generations, and obviously adding analog sticks and, and rumble and and things like that, um, and the and the and the, the touchpad. But this feels like you know it's it's a bit of a redesign, but I really like how it feels in my hands. And and I imagine for for PlayStation when you were conceiving a PS5 and and Mark Cerny was architecting it, I imagine the controller and a lot of those innovations were kind of right there at the beginning as something that you wanted to put into the system. It, it, it's true. You know, as we've said many times with PlayStation 5, it's a brand new generation and we believe in generations. So we want to evolve every part of the experience. And the controller is is really the most intimate part of the experience. It's the extension of the player. So, you know, we thought a lot about this. And one of the things we could have done is just iterate on the DualShock. We've done that for many years. You know, the gamers absolutely love the DualShock. They tell us it's the best controller we've ever made, the latest edition. But we thought, no, let's go a step further. Let's see how a new generation can express a whole new feeling. And, and that's where the dual sense came about. So early on, it was part of the plan to evolve the experience. And, you know, there are many parts of that experience, but this is a, a, a really unique part that yeah. truly takes a step forward in gaming. You mentioned you believe in generations. I guess it's a bit of a controversial opinion to some people about this idea that, um, you know, generations are going to sort of break with the past, right? Um, and I wanted you to maybe talk a bit about that because it does seem like that's like a cardinal sort of virtue of of the PlayStation promises that there is this sort of, you know, break from the past, a new generation with a new console games optimized for that system uh, versus kind of working across, um, you know, multiple devices and multiple generations. Can you maybe give us a little bit more perspective on the controller being a part of that, but that view, which is obviously counter, you know, we've seen Xbox saying something different around that. Why is that so important to PlayStation as a principle of the sort of the architecture of PlayStation 5? Well, well specifically for us, a big pillar of our company is innovation. It's, it's a pillar of Sony Corporation. It's also a, a pillar of the PlayStation company. And, you know, we are always trying to push the boundaries. Uh, you know, we push the boundaries of play. That's what we say internally. We want to excite gamers, we want to deliver new experiences. So as we go into a new piece of hardware, it really has to check the box on a lot of different areas to fulfill those promises. And we talked to a lot of developers about this. You know, we've gone out there, we've talked to people about what they want in a next generation console. And, and really to do that, you've got to deliver a lot. And I think what's really unique about the dual sense is that it, it plays into another one of your senses. Um, but we're covering a lot of the senses with PlayStation 5. I mean, first and foremost, I, I'd say in gaming, for the history of gaming, you know, the first sense is is seeing. It's, 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 it's all the visuals, it's the graphics. And naturally with every generation, the graphics improve. And with PlayStation 5, we're taking a leap forward there. And then there's sound, and we're introducing a new form of 3D audio, which will be really powerful, no matter what you're playing, no matter how you're playing. And then the next piece is, is touch. And, you know, touch has been around for a while. We've had force feedback. Of course, we've, we've had different types of force feedback and rumble in the dual shock. But, but this takes that to a whole new level. You know, similar to what gamers have expected from other generational chips, this brings it to a whole new place. I mean, it's, it's haptic feedback. It's these adaptive dynamic triggers. I mean, something no one's ever experienced before. And it really brings you closer to the game. And, um, you know, the biggest joy for us is putting this in the hands of developers because developers want to push the technology as far as it can go to as far as it can go to tell stories and really bring the gamer into their worlds and we believe you know all of these things combined as well as all the other great ps5 features we spoke about really lead to a next generation experience and in many cases you know we can't take everybody with us from previous consoles into that experience you you need new hardware you, you need new devices to experience what these developers want you to experience. And I imagine, you know, PS4, there still be games coming out for it. I mean, it's not like the, the, the pipeline stops there, but there's a sort of new set of experiences that will be exclusive to PS5, right? It, exactly. PlayStation 4 is a, is a big part of everything we do, and it will continue to be a big part of 
everything we do. There's a lot more to come on PlayStation 4. I think most recently we're seeing you know, some of the greatest titles this generation have released in, in recent weeks, but that will continue. Um, and again, PlayStation 5 is the next generation product, but again, we've got a lot to come for people on PlayStation 4. Still a ton of life in that product. When I was playing Astros, one of the things that my mind started racing with was thinking of how this is going to apply to a game like Ratchet, because sort of you know similar gameplay style, but with the the audio, the speaker in the dual sense, and the haptics and the adaptive triggers. Uh, one feature we haven't talked much about is the SSD and that sort of input output on the device and how that's going to allow a lot of interesting things. And and when I saw the event in June, that Ratchet trailer just blew me away with like jumping between those worlds so quickly. Um, and could you maybe talk a bit about like that feature, which I didn't really, you know, Astro is not a game I think that really is dry, you know, needs the SSD to function the way it is. Can you talk a bit about the SSD and how that's going to impact the, the experience? Sure, sure. And, and this ties back nicely to your question about generations, because when you look at a game like Ratchet, and we've talked about a lot of different features today, and as you mentioned, we haven't mentioned SSD. That is another thing that will make the whole gaming experience different. It'll make it better but it also allows the developers to do new things. It isn't just about faster loading time. And you take a great developer like Insomniac and they found a way to say, okay, look, here's a game that could only be made on PlayStation 5, on this generation using this technology. A lot of what you saw in the show, jumping through those different worlds instantly just can't be done in most cases. And it needs new hardware, it needs new power. So that's something we're looking forward to. I mean, all of these things come together. You combine that with 3D audio, with with a controller, ray tracing. I mean, these are great experiences and these developers know how to harness every piece of those, uh, every piece of those features to really bring you a, a unique experience. And that really speaks to what next gen is for us. So th that Ratchet game, like, couldn't be done on PS4. I guess if you did it, you'd have to fundamentally change the kind of the architecture and the gameplay of it. You would have to change it. You would have to change the way the game works. It just, it would be a different experience. And according to everything that Insomniac have told us, you know, this, this hardware allows them to deliver on this vision. They could not make it. If they did, it would just be different. You would be playing a different type of game and the experience would be different. Yeah, no, I have to say after playing with the controller, dual sense and the experience, I definitely got a sense of, of where you're taking things um, moving forward. And, and let's, Talk a bit about that, because you guys had the the big event, so many great titles. Uh, I think gamers are very excited about PS5. I think we saw even this week there were rumors that uh, pre-orders were happening and the Twitter lit up. I don't know where these rumors start, but I have to ask you, like, is are, are you about to press the button now for pre-orders? Like, yeah. when can we expect to get our PS5? No, de definitely not now. We, we don't know what happened there. We had nothing to do with it. I got a, a message from someone saying people are lining up at stores and, and, and we had no idea why. Um, so I, I think it's safe to say, you know, for all of your viewers, we'll let you know when pre-order will happen. We will let you know. It, it's not going to happen with a minute's notice. We're, we're going to, at some point, let you know when you can pre-order a PlayStation 5. So um, please don't feel like you have to go run out and, and line up anywhere until you receive official notice on how that'll work. So um, yeah. I don't know how that happened. don't know who did it. Wasn't us though, so. Well, but look, I mean, as a marketer, I'm sure it's it's great to see there's that much anticipation for your product. Oh yeah, no, look, we, we, we absolutely love the, the, you know, all of the PlayStation fans and we're thrilled that they're excited about this product. And, and again, you know, with this product, we're, we're trying to bring them experiences they didn't think were possible. And, you know, you're just, you're experiencing some of that one of the first people to experience that, you know, I'm, I'm glad you had the experience that you did because that's what we're hoping to get out of this. And, um, you know, unfortunately, given the current situation in the world, we would love to be out there having gamers start to touch the product. You know, we, we would have done that in normal yeah. years. But we, we can't do that. So it's really hard. I know a lot of people watching this and they're going to really wonder, like, what are they talking about? They're going to be angry at me saying, why did he get it, 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 why, why, did, why, did, why did Jeff get to do it? But, um, but I think it's it's really hard to describe. I mean, you've heard us talk about this, but now you've gone through the experience and, and you can see it's it's different. One thing I want to ask you about, you, you and I have known each other for a long time, and I'm, I'm excited that you're in this worldwide role um, for PlayStation now to kind of unify, uh, you know, the messaging around the world. And there was a new tagline for PlayStation that 
showed up uh, in the event um, in June, which I think was the first time people had seen it. And can you maybe tell us a bit about this this new kind of tagline, which is, is global for PlayStation? Certainly, and, and, and thanks for noticing that. That was actually the last bit of the show. That was the last thing you saw in the show was this new line, which is play has no limits. And, um, you know, as you said, we've known each other a long time and, and you've known how the PlayStation organization was structured. And in the past, we were really separate groups around the world that all worked together and laddered up to a parent company. And in recent years, we've started to globalize and we've seen great benefits from that in many parts of the organization. And so another part of this was the marketing piece. And, and really, if you look at great brands around the world, they all feel similar or, or, or at least to, to great degree similar. And a part of that is the global brand line. And, and these lines, if they're good, they stand the test of time and they stick with the brand for a long time. So this was a hard job for the team. You know, we went back and we looked at this and we thought, what, what type of line would really satisfy the world and at the same time live up to our ambition as a company, as a brand? And, and that was play has no limits. Um, you know, that's what we believe. Um, and there's many different ways to interpret it. So I'm going to leave it to all the, the viewers to interpret it the way they like. But, you know, for us, it is really about speaking to innovation and speaking about new experiences that you can have with PlayStation that you never expected. And um, really, it's it's how we push ourselves. You know, we, we don't constrain ourselves. We want to push the limits of gaming all the time. And, you know, right up to the the end of everything we do, we're constantly pushing to deliver something new, something best in class. And uh, I'm excited about this because I would say, Jeff, you know, you've been a, around the industry for a very long time. I, I would I would challenge you to name all of the PlayStation taglines this past generation around the world. You, you couldn't because there were there were a ton of them. And, I was going to say, I know greatness awaits, but beyond that, yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah I don't so, even. There, there were a lot of them, and and it, you know that's why we really wanted to get this together. And of course, the line will be localized. Was it for the players, I think, or something in the UK, maybe for, for the players. Exactly, yeah. was, was the line that was used across most parts of Europe. But yeah. there were a lot more than that. So we we looked at this and we said, no, let's get one line that solidifies the brand. Um, also, look and feel of the brand is changing slightly. You saw some of that during the event a few weeks ago, and that will also be global. So it will be a very strong global brand. Well, again, uh, there's a lot of love for PlayStation and what you guys have, have teased us with with PS5 this year. I think it's been such an interesting rollout of you never know when something's going to pop up on Twitter or the box art itself was sort of like <laughs> trending when you put out the Miles box. So uh, who knows what's next? I can't let you go without pe everyone online wants to know about like, are we going to get other colors of controllers or consoles? I imagine for launch, it's like hard enough to get one out. But is that on the roadmap? <laughs> We'll we'll talk about it at some point. Right right okay. now we, you know, it's as you mentioned, it's a hard enough job to get the you know the, the unit that we've showed out. So, yes. um, but we'll talk about it at some point. All right. Well, we know there'll be two of them, all digital one as well, coming out, and uh, we are excited yeah. to, uh, to to see what's in store for PlayStation. I'm sure there are more surprises, but uh, yeah, it's an exciting year for the industry that these new consoles are coming out. I never thought there'd be a a console launch in the in the middle of this with I I would never think my first hands on would be in my own place with a PS5 controller, but it's, I'll take it. And they quickly took it away, so I don't even have it anymore. So uh, we will check it out again, hopefully this holiday season. Uh, Eric Lempel, uh, great to have you with us, and uh, thanks for giving us a little bit of uh, hope and excitement this year about uh, PS5. I think it's all something we need, and uh, we look forward to playing it later this year. Thanks, Jeff. It was great speaking with you as always.